This Christmas, enter a world where more than one wears the mask. Brooklyn! Miles Morales. You're going to teach me to be Spider-Man. Peter Parker. Time to sway. And it's a no on the cape. I think it's cool. Hey, guys. Spider-Gwen. Let's go. What a waste of energy. No one's even chasing us. Hey, fellas. Spider-Noir. Hi. Penny Parker. And... This could not get any weirder. Spider-Ham. It can get weirder. Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, only in theaters. My name is Miles Morales, and I'm Spider-Man. Miles, gotta go! In a minute! Oh, oh, in a minute! But in my world, more than one wears the mask. You're like me. You can teach me to be Spider-Man! This was never your city. It's mine. We're gonna need backup. Hey, guys. Konnichiwa! Hey, fellas. Peter Parker. This could not get any weirder. Can Spider-Man turn invisible? This is incredible. Some kind of fight or flight thing. What's that? I love you, Miles. Yeah, I know, Dad. You gotta say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? Dad, I love you. Dad, I love you. That's, That's a copy. copy. This was never your city. It's mine. Miles, what's wrong? How am I supposed to save the whole world? You have to think about saving one person. Officer, I love you. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Hey everybody, it's Charlie. We got a whole bunch of new Spider-Man footage to break down and a non-spoilery early review. They've been screening giant portions of the film, so I'll do a breakdown of all that. There's a new round of that Spider-Man PS4 game giveaway because it is Black Friday. Everything is on sale. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Spider-Man related comment on the video. I'll name a new winner at the end of this. We get a bunch of new footage of them meeting Gwen Stacy, trying to assemble the team, then later then trying to infiltrate the Kingpin's lair, Peter Parker Spider-Man trying to steal some of the snacks, more of the setup for the multiverse when he's trying to explain to him how everything is connected with the fries on his plate. This delicious fry is my universe, this other fry is your universe. We get a lot more footage of him inside the black comic book costume that he makes for himself with the graffiti Spider-Man logo. That comes a little bit later in the film because first you sort of meet him, you get the setup for him at that special charter school. He meets his version of Gwen Stacy that isn't Spider-Gwen. Then the Kingpin sets off the multiverse experiment that causes the other versions to crash land on his Earth. You get all those training montage scenes of him in the Peter Parker Halloween costume. Then after he gets the big tutorial from the other versions of Spider-Man, he makes his own costume. Like he has that scene later in the movie where he salutes his father in his costume without his father knowing that it's him saying, I love you. And he's like, wait, what? Why is this tiny little Spider-Man telling me that he loves me? Then that meta joke tag at the end with the fourth wall break because he's sitting on a wall looking into frame breaking the fourth wall. So a fourth wall break on a wall. There have been a couple jokes earlier in the trailers that have been close to fourth wall breaks, but I don't know that they're going to do a whole lot of Deadpool style legit fourth wall breaking just because that's not really a Spider-Man thing. Spider-Man is a wisecracker, but Deadpool is really the character that's so famous for breaking the fourth wall at every turn. If you're a PlayStation Plus member too, I think that Sony is actually handing out tickets for early screenings of the movie, but I don't know how early they are. It's coming out the second week in December, so it's probably for the first week in December. Usually early screenings are like the week before the movie comes out everywhere else. But early non-spoilery review, if you're not a big Miles Morales fan, this is actually a really enjoyable Spider-Man movie. Now this way over the top from what Ultimate Spider-Man was in the comics. So if you read that comic book arc, that's really just the jumping off point for the movie. Just sets the premise. This is Miles Morales. He lives in what you would call the Ultimates universe. So it's based on that Bendis storyline, but the Spider-Verse of it all didn't come till much later in the comics. And they're doing that in this first movie. So you have to imagine that they're overlapping his origin story in that universe where the original version of Peter Parker in the Ultimate Universe gets killed by the Ultimate Goblin. That inspires him to eventually take the mantle after he gets the spider bite. And then they sort of riff on that. So it's not a page to screen adaptation. It's just a remix of the Spider-Verse storyline with just crazy Easter eggs for everything you could possibly imagine. But the next best comparison would be the Lego Batman movie. If you saw that and the way they treated Easter eggs, like it was so deep. You had to watch that three or four times to catch everything because they had Easter eggs for every iteration of Batman in the movies, the TV shows, and the comics. It's the same deal for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. It is an endurance test of Easter egg hunting. So if you really like that part of comic book movies, you'll have your work cut out for you trying to find everything when you see this. 
If you're a big Marvel movie fan and you were a little turned off by the tonal messiness of Venom, how it just felt like a couple of different Franken movies just cobbled together, like they were trying to make a rated R film, but then it turned into a PG-13 film, and just everybody felt like they were in a slightly different movie. Animation, by comparison, is incredibly precise, and because it takes so much longer to make it, they spend that much more time trying to get it right. So just on a technical level, it's a much more polished film. It feels like this is what they intended to make the entire time, not something that they ended up with at the end of a long process. Even if you're not a huge fan of the Miles Morales character, it's still just so much fun to watch him interact with the other universe versions of Spider-Man, like the midlife crisis 40-something Peter Parker, Penny Parker, Peter Porker, Spider-Man Noir. It's just the beginning. Obviously, they can get so much crazier because it's animation. They can do whatever they want to with the sequels. There's no limitation to what they can do or which other characters they can use in sequels. It's like the Spider-Man games, like just have much more powerful storytelling tools at their disposal. In related Marvel stuff, there's a rumor that Marvel will not release the Avengers 4 trailer next week because there's a different Disney trailer that's dropping that might be Artemis Fowl. There was someone that came up with an interesting theory about Doctor Strange's 1 in 14 million plan being tied to the Avengers 4 trailer release. But the theory states that the countdown clock that they have running on that untitled Avengers website, it's just a countdown running to midnight the night of the Avengers 4 premiere next year. So this person thinks that when the countdown clocks hits that number that Doctor Strange spat out, it was 14,605. When the countdown clock reads that, that's when the trailer is going to release. But even though that sounds like a cool Easter egg for Marvel to drop the Avengers 4 trailer on, the problem is, is that when the countdown clock reads 14,605, that'll be December 13th at 6 minutes past midnight. And Marvel isn't really known for dropping big, major first trailers at six minutes after midnight. That is super early. Typically what they've done the last three years all the way back to Civil War is that they release it early in the week on a big news show like Good Morning America between like six and nine in the morning when most of the world is awake and walking around and able to actually watch the trailer. Like they're not going to wake you up with a big trailer. So that's why I don't believe this December 13th theory. And you have to remember that Sony is probably going to want to promote Spider-Man Far From Home Back in 2016, they released the first Homecoming trailer a couple months after they finished filming. So pretty easy prediction that they'll do something similar for Spider-Man Far From Home. And they also have another Spider-Man movie they're releasing, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, that's releasing December 13th. So it will be kind of weird for Marvel to jack their movie premiere to promote their movie over their Spider-Man Tom Holland film. I know it's kind of confusing, but it just feels like when Marvel drops the Avengers 4 trailer, that will probably be the only big trailer they release that week, and they still have Captain Marvel to promote too. There'll be more footage for that before the end of the year. Marvel's official Spanish foreign language account has been tweeting mysterious countdown promos of all the Avengers intros, so you can kind of tell around the world they're building for a big reveal coming up. So when you're theory crafting about when all these trailers are dropping, just assume that nobody is going to step on each other's toes. So Avengers 4 footage will probably not drop in the same week as new Captain Marvel footage or new Spider-Man Far From Home footage. Kevin Feige confirmed that we get the trailer before the end of the year, but don't be surprised if they don't release it next week and it winds up being sometime early in December. Congratulations, Amazing Nino. You're the giveaway winner from my last big video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your details. Click here to watch Hugh Jackman talk about Deadpool Wolverine crossover during Avengers and Marvel Phase 4, and click here to rewatch that new Lion King trailer. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.